morning all uh, we are dealing with the paper number 2 cell and molecular biology in the last few lectures we have discussed about cell biology and in that uh, we have studied all the components or organelle is related with the cell so earlier we have started with the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell then we have discussed the cytoplasmic matrix then cell wall plasma membrane and the other organelle is like um, ribosomes mitochondria chloroplast which are present in the cytoplasm also we have discussed the structure of nucleus and nucleolus and in nucleus and nucleolus the chromosome was there so uh, up to chromosome or we are uh, we are we are completed the part of cell biology where, where we have discussed about the structure of chromosomes now in the chromosome structure uh, we have uh, studied that in a chromosome there are two important components like dna and the protein molecules so these chromosomes and protein molecules combine uh, dna and protein molecules combine together and they forms the chromosomes and these chromosomes are important uh, material for carrying the hereditary information from the parents to the next generation so as the chromosome and the dna as well as the proteins are the important structures which carries the information from parents to next generation these chromosomes are considered as the hereditary material or the dna is considered as the hereditary material before um, the 18th, end, end of uh, 18th century and in beginning of 19th century there was no advanced sophisticated equipments and there was no development in research field and therefore uh, in that era the cell was considered as a basic structural and functional unit because cell carries all the information or all the organelle is present in the cell carries the information which is essential for the uh, hereditary characteristics but after the investigation or research in at molecular level uh, we are able to find out that dna uh, is the important structure or chromosome is the important structure which carries the information from parent to next generation and this is all we are going to discuss in this particular part that is molecular biology now in molecular biology it is all about the molecules and especially it it, it deals with the uh, molecules like dna rna and the proteins so and these um, processes of protein synthesis so in molecular biology in detail we are going to discuss about the structure of dna then dna replication then synthesis of rna that is transcription and the synthesis of proteins that is translation so all these different mechanisms we are going to discuss in this particular chapter uh, part so this is what is the molecules of life so mrna is there the ribosome is there then proteins are synthesized so all these uh, mechanisms we are going to discuss in molecular biology so in syllabus there are definition in today's lecture we are going to discuss the definition history scope and importance and the central dogma of molecular biology so there are uh, two definitions and all these are have a same or similar meaning it is a branch of biology that deals or concern with the molecular basis of biological activity in and between the cell the molecular basis of biological activity it is all related again i repeat to the dna rna and the proteins and all these dnas are present in the chromosomes so molecular synthesis is there modification is there mechanism is there and interactions molecular synthesis of protein synthesis of rna modifications from dna to rna that is transcription then mechanism of transcription mechanism of translation and the interaction these all we are going to uh, all can be studied in molecular biology there is one more definition the branch of biology that deals with the nature of biological phenomena at a molecular level through the study of dna rna and protein and other macromolecules involved in genetic information and cell function so in molecular biology it is all related with the molecules and these molecules are especially the dna rna and the protein so all these mechanisms for uh, for synthesis modification and interaction we are going to discuss in this entire syllabus of molecular biology in today's lecture we are just going to introduce the concept of molecular biology and this concept was discussed earlier i just mentioned that in the late 80s and beginning of 19th 19th century was the um, era for molecular biology and this era started with the discovery or uh, work of uh, mandels gregor mandels it is it was in 1850s where 
they they propose the law of inheritance after that frederick mischer in 1868 they isolated nucleus from pus cell so pus cell they they this uh, studied the pus cell and from that pus cell they are able to isolate the nucleus and that nucleus is nothing but the combination or mixture of protein and nucleic acids and this was the uh, beginning of uh, study of dna or chromosomes so nucleus was they are able to isolate the nucleus and from that nucleus uh, we are uh, uh, separated out the proteins and the nucleic acid and these nucleic acids are nothing but the ribonucleic acids that is rna and the oxyribonucleic acids that is dna then this work was continued by frederick griffith and um, they proposed the experiments of transformation now there is one mechanism proposed by frederick griffith in 1928 and that mechanism was experiment of transformation where they propose that something is present in a cell or in a nucleus or in a nucleus and that uh, that material which is present in a nucleus or nucleus carries the information or transform the information from parent to next generation so this was the experiment of griffith and this was the foundation for discovery of dna the work of griffith was further expanded or extended by avery macleod and mccarty there is one uh, spelling mistake it is macleod like that it is macleod uh, pardon uh, it was in 1944 they continued the work of griffith and they are they are able to isolate the uh, they are able to prove that dna is the genetic material then lederberg and Tatum they describe genetic recombination in bacteria or bacterial reproduction. Then in 1949, uh, Hershey he he described the genetic recombination in bacteria for or in a virus. Now all these experiments are related with the bacteria either bacteria or viruses and they use the bacteria and viruses in the beginning to prove. that genetic material may be the dna because it carries the information from one generation to other generation or the further generation so uh, keep focus on these things in 1928 the work of griffith then 1944 avery macleod and mccarty then 1946 lederberg and totten in 1949 hershey then further the work was uh, further extended uh, by chargobs so this is one more important investigation uh, by edwin chargobs in 1948 and 50 and uh, they propose the important rules for uh, the combination of adenine guanine cytosine and thymine these four are nitrogenous bases adenine guanine cytosine and thymine these are the four nitrogenous bases uh, bases are present in the dna structure and these uh, as per the chargobs rule there is uh, some criteria or some basis for their distribution or their contribution or their composition in the structure of dna what they propose adenine is equal to thymine so whenever the dna we can iso- we, we are able to isolate the dna in that dna adenine is equal to thymine and guanine is equal to cytosine whereas the uh, complex of adenine and guanine or if we uh, add the adenine and guanine it 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 is always equal to thymine and cytosine and adenine and thymine are not equal to guanine and cytosine so this was the uh, rules proposed by chargobs and these rules are known as chargobs rule so there are uh, two more statements but uh, for the basis uh, we just uh, we just have to keep in mind that adenine is equal to thymine guanine is equal to cytosine Uh, the combination of a and g is equal to t and c but a and t is not equal to g and c then the work of harshi and uh, chase and they perform, perform the experiments of uh, uh, radioactivity and they use the t2 uh, fast bacteria and they um, use the um, 32p and 35s for nucleic acid and protein and they perform this experiment and prove that the protein are not responsible for carrying the information whereas the dna are responsible for carrying the information now by using all the knowledge of all these uh, scientists or all these workers finally in 1953 watson and crick proposed the three dimensional structure of dna i have again i have one mistake here 
I have to quote the contribution of Rosalind Franklin in the similar year 1952-53. Rosalind Franklin has proposed the uh, X-ray diffraction photographs of DNA, and that uh, photograph earlier Watson and Crick was um, of the opinion that the structure of DNA is ladder-like, whereas the X-ray crystallograph of Rosalind Franklin, where where she has discovered the X X or cross between the two uh, templates of the DNA and that material that work was used by Watson and Crick and finally they proposed the uh, three dimensional structure of uh, DNA um, for the work of Watson and Crick there is one more contributor uh, contributor that is uh, Wilkins so Rosalind Franklin was working in the laboratory of Wilkins and by using the knowledge of these uh, uh, Rosalind Franklin's X-ray crystallographs as well as the contributor Wilkins, Watson and Crick proposed the model of DNA structure. In 1957, a Todd, uh, they, they proposed the structure of nucleosides and nucleotides. So this was the important contribution and finally in 1958, Crick um, proposed the uh, role of tRNA that is carrying the mRNA uh, amino acids to uh, mRNA strand was proposed by FSC Crick and for the work. Uh, then in 1958 this discovery is related with the DNA replication and uh, for that Meselson and Stahls perform one experiment and they propose the replication is of semi-conservative type. Earlier, there are uh, three mechanisms proposed by different workers that is the replication may be conservative type, semi-conservative type or it is random replication. Whereas the contribution of Meselson and Stahls was helpful for, uh, for uh, to prove that the replication is of conservative type, uh, semi-conservative type, sorry. Then 1959, McLean, Roberts and Gritton. They, they shows the contribution of ribosomes. So basically ribosomes, they are present in the cytoplasmic matrix. They are um, generally in dissociated form. But when they are involved in the process of protein synthesis, they become associated with mRNA. And the contribution of ribosome was shown by these three uh, workers. Then in 1960, Doty, Murmur and others demonstrated the complementary strand of DNA can be separated and come back together exactly as before. So this, this contribution uh, is related again with the uh, replication of DNA. Then Jacob and Monard, they wrote a uh, paper on the messenger RNA. Uh, for the contribution of Watson and Creek as well as for the work of Jacob and Monard, they received the Nobel Prize. Uh, Jacob and Monar received the uh, Nobel Prize for Operant Concept, whereas Watson and Creek uh, received the Nobel Prize along with Wilkins for the structure of DNA. Then, in 1961, Nirenberg and Mathai, Nirenberg and Kurana, they propose a mechanism for termination of transcription and termination of translation, and for that, they, they, they uh, identified the poly U residue. So generally in a uh, DNA strand or RNA strand, uh, it is on RNA strand, there are different nitrogenous bases that is adenine, uh, guanine, uracil and cytosine. And this poly U residue, it is related with the continuous long run of E residue and it is related with the phenylalanine and that continuous E residue terminates the process of translation. Then the work of Kurana, uh, they, they uh, identified the repeated basis of uh, genetic codes. Then Okazaki fragment, this is one more impo interesting uh, thing. Uh, Okazaki fragments, these, these are related with or associated with the replication process. So from the DNA strand, two DNA strands uh, with the uh, by the uh, semi-conservative method, two DNA strands are synthesized. Now when the two DNA strands are synthesized through uh, during the replication process, we can find in an image that on one side the arrow is continuous and on the other side the arrow is discontinuous or it has some breaks. So on one end, that is from 3 prime to 5 prime end, 
थ्री टू फाइव प्राइम एंड द स्टैंड और द कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री स्टैंड इज कंटिन्यूस एंड ऑन द अदर साइड इट इज डिसकंटिन्यूस एंड दिस डिसकंटिन्यूस स्मॉल सेगमेंट्स ऑफ द डी एन ए न्यूली सिंथिसाइज डी एन ए आर दिस दे आर कॉल्ड एज ओकजकी फ्रैगमेंट्स एंड दिस दिस कंसेप्ट वॉज डिस्क्राइड बाय ओकजकी इटा and then pribnow box it is one more interesting contributor uh, contribution for the initiation of uh, this initiation process or the promoter region was there and this promoter region contains the tata a a t sequence that is uh, tata box it is called and this tata box is also called as uh, pribnow box and this region is the promoter region through which the process of synthesis can takes place so this this is all about the uh, history of molecular biology there are some other scientists they have contributed in different areas but i have focused all these uh, important contribution contributors because um, uh, we are going to discuss in later part of our syllabus the contribution of all these important scientists in molecular biology and that is why i have restricted this part to some scientists only then uh, scope and importance of central dogma of molecular biology now central dogma or what is the base of molecular biology this was proposed by uh, francis crick and uh, as per the statements given by crick the central dogma states that once information has passed into protein it cannot give, get out again so this information is continuous information so basically in the picture we can observe the dna strand is there through the process of transcription from dna the rnas are synthesized and from rna through the process of translation the proteins are synthesized so this is one one way process where the information cannot get back again in more detail the transfer of information from nucleic acid to nucleic acid that is from dna to rna or from nucleic acid to protein may be possible but transfer from protein to protein or protein to nucleic acid is impossible so this is what is the central dogma of molecular biology it deals with detailed residue by residue transfer of sequential information it state that such information cannot be transferred back from protein to either protein or the nucleic acid so this is what is the central dogma of molecular biology now this uh, studies of molecular biology is the scope of this work is useful in research it is very useful in transplantation it is useful in forensic analysis these studies are useful for identifying the characteristics and many others so this is how the molecular biology has important contribution in the Uh, advancement of human being as well as the in the life of human being and these things we are going to discuss in our later lectures thank you